Well, can you, uh, before we get moving to this week, just, you know, putting the roster together, the machinations, uh, kept us busy there for <laughs> a couple of days. Yeah, so. well, I figured it needed to entertain you on the uh, off week. So, yeah, we've made a lot of uh, moves and um, obviously settled down a little bit in the short term, but uh, we'll continue to, to evolve and, and uh, look to add if there's something, you know, that can improve our roster, something becomes available. But uh, happy with the guys we got right now. We're excited about the challenge of week one. Why put Dion and Isaiah Oliver on IR? Because we didn't feel like they were ready. Pretty simple. You know, you're ramping up. They're both of them coming off off uh, season surgeries. Um, thought there were some mental hurdles they they cleared, but uh, didn't feel like they were 100. Was that at least when you activate Dion off the pup last week and Isaiah gets run time for the first time? Was that part of the overall plan from the jump, or did you need to see something? Well, it's part maybe? of the plan when you put somebody on pup to be able to. You have the ability to take them off, and then you also have the ability to put people on IR if they're not healthy. So it was a good assessment to see where people were at and their return to play. And that's pretty much what we did. Same with Isaiah. Whether he started on pup or we thought that he was, it expedited his um, return by practicing. And then we had to make a decision as an organization and, and talking with the player and medically. And they're not quite at 100% yet. Could you discuss the uh, moves with the waiver pickups and the best, best of veterans that? Or, uh, you know, you'll have to move them around for a little bit to get uh, get some people in here you all want it? Um, well, the, the waiver claims, you know, guys that we thought uh, between Chuma and Matt that could potentially help us, and we'll see what they can, what they can add. Um, so there's a lot of different things were going on the last couple of days around the league. So uh, fortunately for us, you know, some moves we made and we were able to get some guys back. Um, you take the risk, but that's, that's part of the – strategy and every team goes through it the same way what's the and this might be a really weird question but what's that like you have guys like mike ford and dean marlowe who are literally not on your team for minutes more or less like what's that like in those conversations as a coach like how does that even go well they're just they're transactions like i said you whether um you make those transactions and then you know you gotta decide whether you want to bring them back or not Right. Where are you at, uh, either coach-wise or knowing the personnel, <clears throat> at this point a year now compared to at this point a year ago? Yeah, it was a lot different. Uh, every year there's different obstacles, and certainly the roster's changed quite a bit since Terry and I got here in January of 2021. Uh, very different team. We took week one last year than we have right now. And, um, you know, different – different cap issues and you know we had we had some pretty experienced veterans that were on one year deals last year we had a bunch of young guys in the, in the mix as well uh, this year had been a pretty good turnover um, we're certainly younger in a lot of spots which is uh, you know it's exciting in certain certain positions of players that we uh, look forward to continuing to develop and we're very different certainly behind the center too which is which is a drastic change from where we were a year ago. Well, yeah, on that, you have more than half the roster right, right now in 53. I think it wasn't here a year ago. So is is it almost just as big of a mystery right now what you have compared to a year ago at this time, or do you feel like you have a better sense? For well, we have a, you know, thought I had a pretty good idea of where we were at a year ago. You know, you go out there, and and opening days are, are strange for a lot of reasons, right? Um, a lot of unknown. Every team's dealing with it. You know, we're going to play a very uh, veteran team coming in here. Uh, schemes are very similar. Different coach. Uh, obviously, Dennis has been there a long time. Um, you know, still running the defense, but he's you know he's, it'll be different with him as a head coach. You know, Pete Carmichael takes over the offense. Sean's not calling the plays, so there's unknown for them too. Uh, they have a veteran team. They've added some other vets that they're, I'm sure they're anticipating to be productive for them. So where we're at, as you get into this. We knew what kind of team we had last year. Um, certainly didn't start the way you wanted. You come out and full throttle, you run 40-something plays and only come away with six points and don't do anything in the second half. It's going to look ugly. Uh, but this is a very different team we have coming in opening day this year. And we're where excited. Did, where, where did you Where's learn? Drake at, London? Uh, progressive. He's going IR, so yeah, he's we progressive. Check on him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate having him available? Yeah. We'll see what it looks like. 
going back to what you're talking about last year, what did you learn from that opener last year? Well, it's a different it team. It was a lot. There's a completely different team. I mean, you learn a lot about people. I mean, we made progress in, in a lot of areas and certain things and some of our core found, foundation you hope to, to carry over. But we'll always adapt to the strength of our players and, and who we have. And we won't make excuses and we'll find every try to find every advantage we can. Sorry, did you say from when then you'll see what he looks like? Was yeah, he's progressing. Um, There's obviously going to be a lot of talk this year about quarterbacks from this game right. through the 17th. Do you have something in your mind in terms of how many games you think Desmond needs to play for you to get an accurate assessment of him moving forward? What was the question? How many games do you think Desmond needs to play for you to get an accurate assessment? I'm of not him? answering hypothetical uh, fantasy football and um, that kind of BS, Jeff. It's, it's not hypothetical. I mean, you, you need to. I mean, it is you, hypothetical. You, you because want to tell me, compare, give me this. Our comparative data, what. What comparison do you have? Is there a certain quarterback or a certain plan strategy that you're comparing this to that somebody's done? No, I'm asking you the question since you want to know where you're at quarterback wise before next year, and I understand the focus is on this year, but before you make a decision on next year, your quarterback situation, you're going to want to know what you have in Desmond Ritter. So you're going to want to have. We want to know what we have in Marcus Mariota. So if you want to make this about 23, I mean, Jeff, you can ask every which way we're focused on week one. We're not going to come here about some hypothetical. That's not where our focus is right now. Our focus is on the New Orleans Saints. So if you want to you know, hang out with the bots uh, on, on Twitter and social media and get all these hypo hypothetical GM scenarios or great team building, uh, some of these other asinine you know, narratives, go ahead. But we're focused on the, on the New Orleans Saints. I'm not going to answer questions about hypotheticals. Coach, getting ready for uh, Coach Allen, who you know started his career here, uh, and then Coach Reeves. Uh, do you look back at his uh, Raiders stuff, or you just stay with the, what they've been doing? Well, we went back and looked at his Texas A&M stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was the RC Slocum days. Yeah. But uh, uh, is there anything you can learn from other stops, or uh, they're just the Saints? That it's the same crew. You got to get ready for. Well, he'll have his own flavor, but uh, he's done a terrific job the last couple of years defensively. They know who they are. They're a veteran team. Um, they've got a terrific front, and they roll those guys in here, uh, in, in there. Uh, I think they got one of the smartest middle linebackers in, in football. And, uh, you know, they got pretty good corners. They, they've invested a lot in the defensive backfield, and they'll look a little bit different at safeties, but they'll, they'll be sound. I know that. I'll try not to ask a hypothetical asinine Twitter bot question here. Let's see um, we start there. That'd be good. Yeah. All right, go for it. <laughs> what's the backstory in terms? Excuse me. What's the backstory in terms of how you guys came across D. Alford? Yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, our pro staff, these guys, like I said, they're trying to turn over every stone. It's not just coach speak or some cliche or some bumper sticker for you there. But uh, you know, you you look for help anywhere you can get it, and especially as a lot of it is out of necessity. You don't have money to spend. You, Find different ways. Find different. You got an obstacle. Find different solutions, and that's what we're about here. And so, obviously, somebody in the pro department had scouted him in the CFL. They liked him, um, knew about him coming out out of Tusculum. So we brought him in for a workout. Like what we saw, uh, he was here almost every day in the off season. Got got stronger. I think uh, Thomas Stallworth did a heck of a job. And D's credit. I mean, he came in here and worked um, and had a really good camp and earned a job. And personnel know about him before the CFL? Was he on anybody's radar at all? I'm sure they, yeah, I'm, they you have all that data now. I mean, guys coming out um, a little different than guys trying to uh, get the original Rolodex or the index cards to, to find their old scouting notes. That's the one thing I'd say in modern technology allows you to keep track uh, probably a little bit easier than it used to back in your day, D led. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's somebody had him on the radar. It seems to be pretty good operating in, in, in space and being around the ball. Like, what's the, 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 the key for him kind of making so many plays on the ball? How's he been? He's a good player. I mean, he understands what, what his strengths are and his weaknesses are, and he's continuing to get better every day. You said that in the CFL, this was easier, kind of, I'm paraphrasing, because the receivers get that run to start. And he, you know, he, he 
easier. Yeah, I wouldn't it's paraphrase that. It's easier. It's just different. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, certainly. Different yeah, different sure. I mean, they're playing different rules and the motion rules and stuff like that. You got to play space. in the space, right? A little bit wider, feels wider, more people too. Um, certainly, everything that led to this point that got him here. Uh, we're excited, and we'll see what where it goes. Going back to London for a second, do you need to see him practice this week in order to use him Sunday? You don't have to. We'd like to see him. Do you anticipate him practicing this week? We'll see how he progresses. I feel good about where he's progressing. Not the same. You're trying to play fantasy football and some. No. Some, some probably uh, Twitter analytic guy that, that sounds real smart, like the Twitter doctor or some of these other clowns. And um, they think they know all the obstacles about team building and how to, how to handle locker room morale and to, to win football games in the NFL, and they got no idea. So different hypothetical, sure. On the, on the surface, on the surface there, Jeff, yes, but in a completely different aspect. You're talking about a guy that's healthy that may or may not play this week. Now you're talking about um, – No, I'm just trying to get it. Made his bones in offense and coaching quarterbacks. How much do you think you need to look at him to evaluate him? Before Everybody's different. Everybody's different, Jeff. There's some. There's some. That that's a fair question. The way you phrased it was. Oh, you like that better? Okay. Right. Well, it's not that you like it better. I mean, the way you asked it was asinine. That was a little more direct, and I'll answer a direct, a good question. That to help. Yeah, I'm hoping you go a little deeper. How much you need to see him? What you Again, everybody's to different. And it, it's all our players. What do you mean to see? Like, we're trying to win games, Jeff. So uh, we're excited about where we're at. We know we got a challenge here against New Orleans. I'll let you and the, and the, uh, the bots talk about next year. I'm still learning how to answer ask questions. So well, at least you, I, like, how many accounts do you have? One or two or three, maybe? I don't know. That's, that's a question for people in the building, not me. Okay. <laughs> How much, how much do you I'm not answering that. No, no, no. I'll, like, but, 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 okay, cool. I'll let you finish. How, if it's a good much, question. Not. How much during the week do you need to do you work him, say, with the ones or twos? This is all? painful, guys. Okay. It's absolutely, this is brutal. No, I, I just, this is brutal. Just you can get on a podcast, you can get online, you can argue with the clouds, you can argue with the, with the Russian bots. Don't care. Guys, we're trying to prepare a game to go win a football game. I, I meant more, I, I mean, Ritter's obviously your backup, but I mean more. I mean, more, sorry. I mean, more same way we'll it. work Chuma, we'll work Gossip, we'll work Fetty. Everybody that's on the active roster has to prepare to play. If you don't, in all seriousness, the 48 guys that you dress out there, they got to prepare to play. Because something could happen the first snap of the game, and you better be able to adapt. If you're banking on your whole game plan on one guy, you better have an answer if the guy goes down. All right, well, yeah, so then, and you have, last year you had Matt, and you had, back, you had younger back of quarterbacks cool. behind Matt. This year you have a guy, Marcus, who hasn't been in this offense for as long or has as much experience as Matt does. So does that change how much you play back? You work a backup quarterback during the week versus maybe – I'm not going to get into before. our strategies. we got to get all our guys ready to go. Simple as that. Things can change just like that. Or you could be going all game and you're getting a critical fourth down. The guy has to come out. The guy better be ready to go in there and try to win you the game, whether it's at center, left tackle, right guard, defensive tackle, the second nickel. Avery's got to be ready to go play corner. If we, you know, it's, it's what you have to have contingency plans. Uh, speaking of center, has a decision been made on the start? It has. Um, I think he basically told me that um, the depth chart goes, it, it, yeah, it drops. It drops, yeah. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll, I'll create a profile and do a real dramatic release for you. All right. Make sure it doesn't get leaked. It got leaked before preseason. Maybe. I'll put flames. It looked like one of those Kenny Powers videos that he made. Did that work for you, like little flame graphics? I'll do that. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Maybe I'll, I'll create something like this. We can get some content created for you. Sure. Coming out of there. I use this. If I can use Microsoft Paint, the, the original version <laughs> for my graphics. Again, we'll release it when the depth chart releases. We good? Anything else about the Saints or anything else? Or are you going to continue to? All right, Wait, look forward so, to it. So we can trust that depth chart then in terms of, is there going to be an do you make it like a, Are you going to do an They say it's style? unofficial, but yeah. Yeah, it's really They are. I mean, you could, we, we, we give the ability to change it, right, before no, the first no, snap. No, once it comes out, we don't get 
No, I'm talking about oh, it, but we can play who we need to, right? I don't need to go into some kind of Nick Saban rant that he did on his depth chart. Did you see that? Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that was, was pretty good. Okay. Ready to roll? Yep. Regular season form, D-Led? Yes, sir. All right, thank you.